today we will learn about mitochondria in this slide i will give you a brief introduction about the mitochondria this is a plant cell and this is the mitochondria it is a double membrane bound organelle found in most eukaryotic organisms it is also known as the powerhouse of the cell was coined by philip sigwells in 1957 because the mitochondria use aerobic respiration to generate most of the cell supply of adenosine triphosphate or atp which is subsequently used throughout the cell as a source of chemical energy Now I will discuss about the history of mitochondria. Albert von Kolliker, a physiologist, discovered the existence of mitochondria around 1857 while he was studying human muscle cells and he noted strange granules in them. Later on, Richard Altman in 1890 was the first to recognize the ubiquitous occurrence of the structures he called them bioblasts and concluded that they were elementary organisms living inside cells and carrying out vital functions the name mitochondrion was introduced in 1898 by carl wendler and the term originates from the greek word mitos means straight and controus means granule referring to the appearance of the structures during spermatogenesis leonor michaelis discovered that jenner's green can be used as a supra vital stain for mitochondria in 1900 benjamin f kingsbury in 1912 first related them with cell respiration but almost exclusively based on morphological observations In 1930, 13 in particles from extracts of guinea pig liver were linked to respiration by Otto Hendrik Warburg, which he called Grana. Warburg and Hendrik Otto Willan, who had also postulated a similar particle mechanism, disagreed on the chemical nature of the respiration. It was not until 1925. when david kelin discovered cytochromes that the respiratory chain was described in 1946 albert clot first correlated morphological and biochemical studies on isolated mitochondria from cell fractionation hock moon in 1946 concluded that succino oxidase and cytochrome oxidase localized in the mitochondria over time the fractionation method was further developed improving the quality of the mitochondria isolated and other elements of cell respiration were determined to occur in the mitochondria the first high resolution electron micrographs appeared in 1952 replacing the genus green stains as the preferred way to visualize mitochondria this led to a more detailed analysis of the structure of the mitochondria including confirmation that they were surrounded by a membrane it also showed a second membrane inside the mitochondria that folded up in ridges dividing up the inner chamber and that the size and shape of the mitochondria varied from cell to cell in 1967 it was discovered that mitochondria contain ribosomes in 1968 methods were developed for mapping the mitochondrial genes with the genetic and physical map of yeast mitochondrial dna completed in 1976 in this slide i will give you a general information about the mitochondria the number of mitochondria in a cell can vary widely by organism tissue and cell type 
immature red blood cell has no mitochondria whereas a liver cell can have more than 2000 a large number of unicellular organisms such as microsporidia paravasalids and diplomonads have reduced or transformed their mitochondria into other structures one eukaryote monosarcomonides is known to have completely lost its mitochondria and some of the mitochondrial functions seem to be carried out by cytoplasmic proteins now but in case of one multicellular organism Hinegua salminicola is known to have retained mitochondrial related organelles in association with a complete loss of their mitochondrial genome. Mitochondria are typically spherical, ellipsoidal or rod like in shape and range in size from 0.5 to 1 micrometer and 1 to 3 micrometer in length but vary considerably in size and structures. Unless specifically stained, they are not visible. Mitochondria are specifically stained by the dye genus green bee. Mitochondria move freely in the streaming cytoplasm in association with the active myosin system. Hypothesis about the origin of mitochondria. There are two hypotheses about the origin of mitochondria. Endosymbiotic, this was popularized by Lean Margulis and autogenous hypothesis. The endosymbiotic hypothesis for the origin of mitochondria suggests mitochondria were descended from aerobic bacteria that somehow survived endocytosis by another cell and became incorporated into the cytoplasm. The ability of this bacteria to conduct respiration in host cells that had relied on glycolysis and fermentation would have provided a considerable evolutionary advantage. But in the autogenous hypothesis, mitochondria were born by splitting of a portion of DNA from the nucleus of the eukaryotic cell at the time of divergence with the prokaryotes this DNA portion would have been enclosed by membranes which could not be crossed by proteins. Since mitochondria have many features in common with bacteria, the endosymbiotic hypothesis is the more widely accepted of the two accounts. In this slide, we will know about the origin of mitochondria. The oldest arm Disputedly, eukaryotic microfossils go back 1.45 billion years in the fossil record. Given the coincidence of mitochondria with the eukaryotic state, this can also be seen as a minimum age for mitochondria and a rough based case starting date for eukaryotic evolution. According to newer geochemical views, this date of origin corresponds um, to a protracted phase in earth history when the oceans were mostly anoxic from 1.8 billion years ago until about 580 million years ago because of the workings of marine estuaries producing bacteria. Eukaryotes thus arose and diversified in an environment where anoxia was commonplace. It is surprising that many independent eukaryotic lineages have preserved anaerobic energy producing pathways in their mitochondria. It has been suggested that SAR-11 clade of bacteria shares a relatively recent common ancestor with the mitochondria while phylogenetic sorry phylogenomic analysis uh, indicate that mitochondria evolved from a pseudomonadota lineage that is closely related to or a member of alpha proteobacteria some paper describe 
mitochondria as a sister to the alpha proteobacteria together forming the sister the marine proteo one group together forming the sister to magnetococci d here we can see the structural components of mitochondria the outermost layer is known as outer membrane and the innermost layer is known as inner membrane and the space between the outer membrane and inner membrane is called intermembrane space the inner membrane is compartmentalized into numerous folds called cristae which surrounds the matrix the mitochondria also contain ribosomes dna and f0 f1 atp outer membrane the outer mitochondrial membrane which encloses the entire organelle is 60 to 75 angstrom thick it has a protein to phospholipid ratio similar to the cell membrane it contains large numbers of integral membrane proteins called porins a major trafficking protein is the pore forming voltage dependent anion channel or vdac The VDAC is the primary transporter of nucleotides, ions, and metabolites between the cytosol and the intermembrane space. It is formed as a beta barrel that spans the outer membrane, similar to that in the gram-negative bacterial membrane. The outer membrane contains many enzymes such as monoamine. oxidase rotenone insensitive nadh cytochrome c reductase kinurenine hydroxylase and fatty acid oa ligase are found in the outer membrane of the mitochondria enzymes are involved in diverse activities such as elongation of fatty acids oxidation of epinephrine and the degradation of tryptophan The disruption of the outer membrane permits proteins in the intermembrane space to leak into the cytosol leading to cell death. The outer membrane can associate with the inner membrane called MAM or mitochondria associated inner membrane. This is important in the inner mitochondria calcium signaling and is involved in the transfer of lipids between the inner and mitochondria. Larger proteins can enter the mitochondria if a signaling sequence at their end terminus binds to a large multi sub unit protein called translocate in the outer membrane which then actively moves them across the membrane Mitochondrial pro proteins are imported through specialized translocation complexes Now you will learn about inner membrane space or perimitochondrial space. Inner membrane space is the space between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. The outer membrane is freely permeable to small molecules because channel proteins called porins in the outer membrane allow free diffusion of ions and small proteins about 5000 daltons or less into the ims that's why the inner membrane space is chemically equivalent to the cytosol regarding the small molecules it contains the protein composition of the space is different from the protein composition of the cytosol because the large proteins must have a specific signaling sequence to be transported across the outer membrane one protein that is localized to the intermembrane space in this way is cytochrome c releasing of cytochrome c from the inner membrane space to the cytosol activates pro caspases and triggers a caspase cascade leading to apoptosis 
the ims involved in the mitochondrial protein translocation most of proteins destined for the mitochondrial matrix are synthesized as a precursors in the cytosol and are imported into the mitochondria by the translocation of the outer membrane and the translocation of the inner membrane the precursor proteins called small team chaperons which are hexameric complexes are located in the intermembrane space and they bind hydrophobic precursor proteins and deliver the precursor to the translocation of the inner membrane or team inner membrane space is also involved in oxidative phosphorylation three enzyme complexes are responsible for the electron transport they are nadh ubiquinone oxido reductase complex ubiquinone cytochrome c oxido reductase complex and cytochrome c oxidase the protons are pumped from the mitochondrial matrix to the ims by this respiratory complexes as a result an electrochemical gradient is generated which is combined by forces due to a h plus gradient and a voltage gradient the ph in the intermembrane space is about 0.7 unit lower than the one in the matrix and the membrane potential of the inner membrane space site becomes more positively charged than the matrix site This electrochemical gradient from the IMS to the matrix is used to drive the synthesis of ATP in the mitochondria. In this slide we will know about the innermost layer of the mitochondria. The inner mitochondrial membrane is the mitochondrial membrane which separates the mitochondrial matrix from the intermembrane space. The inner membrane of mitochondria is similar in lipid composition to the membrane of bacteria. In case of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the inner membrane is made of phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylinositol, cardiolipin, and phosphatidic acid in the inner membrane. The inner membrane is freely permeable to oxygen, carbon dioxide and water only. It is much less permeable to ions and small molecules than the outer membrane creating compartments by separating the matrix from the cytosolic environment. This compartmentalization is a necessary feature for metabolism. The inner mitochondrial membrane is both an electrical insulator and chemical barrier. Sophisticated ion transporters exist to allow specific molecules to cross this barrier. There are several antiport systems embedded in the inner membrane allowing exchange of anions between the cytosol and the mitochondrial matrix. In this slide I will show you an image of crystal junction model. Here you can see how inner membrane compartmentalized into numerous folds called cristae which expands the surface area of the inner mitochondrial membrane enhancing its ability to produce ATP. For typical liver mitochondria the area of the inner membrane is about five times as large as the outer membrane. This ratio is variable and mitochondria from cells that have a greater demand for ATP such as muscle cells contain even more cristae. These folds are studied with proteins including ATP synthase and a variety of cytochromes. Cristae affect overall chemiosmotic function of mitochondria. You can also see the crystal junction. Christi and the inner boundary membranes are separated by junctions. 
the end of crista is partially enclosed by transmembrane protein complexes that bind head to head and link opposing crista membranes in a bottleneck like fashion for example deletion of the junction protein immt leads to a reduced inner membrane potential and impaired growth and to dramatically aberrant inner membrane structures which form concentric stacks instead of the typical invagination the next mitochondrial part is matrix the matrix is the space enclosed by the inner membrane it contains about 2 by 3 of the total proteins in a mitochondrion the matrix contains a highly concentrated mixture of hundreds of enzymes special mitochondrial ribosomes tRNA and several copies of the mitochondrial DNA genome small organic molecules nucleotide cofactors mitochondrial enzymes facilitate reaction responsible for the major functions include production of atp oxidation of pyruvate and beta oxidation of fatty acids the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation here we can see a video about the mitochondria this video will give you some general knowledge let's see the video Our body is made up of trillions of cells. They all require energy to function. This energy is created within our cells in the mitochondria. Here, food is converted into chemical energy called ATP. ATP is released by the mitochondria so cells can use it. Mitochondria consist of two membranes, an outer membrane separating it from the cytosol and an inner membrane. surrounding the so-called matrix the area between these membranes is called the intermembrane space atp is generated at the inner membrane of mitochondria by an efficient mechanism called oxidative phosphorylation involving several membrane protein complexes nutrients provide high energy electrons in the form of nadh which are used by the protein complexes to pump protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space this continuous pumping creates a proton gradient where the positively charged protons are attracted to the more negative matrix when the protons re-enter the matrix through the atp synthase protein complex they catalyze the production of atp You can see this video directly on YouTube following this YouTube link. Just as mitochondria act as an energy source, disease can also be affected due to mitochondrial dysfunction. The DNA within mitochondria is more susceptible to damage than the rest of the genome. This is because free radicals which can cause damage to dna are produced during atp synthesis also mitochondria lack the same protective mechanisms found in the nucleus of the cell however the majority of mitochondrial diseases are due to mutations in nuclear dna that affect product that end up in the mitochondria when mitochondria stop functioning the cell they are is in starved of energy so depending on the type of cell symptoms can vary widely as a general rule cells that need the largest amounts of energy such as heart muscle cells and nerve are affected the most by faulty mitochondria 
because mitochondria perform so many different functions in different tissues there are literally hundreds of different mitochondrial diseases such as loss of muscle coordination and weakness problems with vision or hearing learning disabilities heart liver or kidney disease gastrointestinal problems neurological problems including the dementia etc this slides consist of a list of references thank you for watching this video please do like and subscribe the channel